1950s science fiction podcast, season one, episode two. Episode two, sci-fi TV programs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 1950s science fiction podcast. I hope that you've listened to and enjoyed episode one of the show. In episode one, I talked about 50s sci-fi radio dramas and how great they were. Today, I will discuss the science fiction programs broadcasted on television during the decade. Broadcast TV industry got started just after World War II and started to grow. There were experiments in TV transmissions conducted during the 1930s. However, the war was stopped to any future development of other technology. Once the war was over, the commercial TV industry got started. Then TV sets went on sale by the middle of the 1950s. Most major cities had at least one TV station operating. 1950s saw extraordinary growth in the new medium, much the same way we saw the internet boom back at the turn of the 21st century. More and more TV sets went on sale during the 1950s. By the end of the decade, TV sets were commonplace in America. The early part of the 1950s saw live broadcasted programs of all genres. Once again, sci-fi gets relegated to children's programming. The decade started with programs such as Captain Video, Captain Zero, and Tom Corbett. All three shows were produced as a live TV broadcast, but were recorded for future playback. Captain Video and Tom Corbett were space operas, while Captain Zero was a time travel adventure show. There were other shows aimed at younger viewers as well. These included Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, which had been radio dramas and serials during the 30s. Both Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon remained popular for some time, so it was natural that they would find themselves on TV. There were attempts. There were attempts at making science fiction more for more mature viewers, such as teenagers and young and older adults. These shows included Tales of Tomorrow, Science Fiction Theater, and later in the decade, The Twilight Zone and Men in Space. The latter two debuted in 1959, but would go on to the next decade. I may decide to cover these shows in a future podcast. For now, I'll discuss Science Fiction Theater and Tales of, of Tomorrow. Tales of Tomorrow. Sci-Fi Show Tales of Tomorrow was broadcasted on the ABC network from 1951 to 1953. The show consisted of 85 episodes, each lasting a half an hour long. The show was broadcasted live but used a motion picture process for recording the series for later showings. The show was developed by sci-fi author Theodore Surgeon and producer Mort Abrams. The Science Fiction League of America assisted in the production by granting use of its stories from various authors, many of which became best-selling writers of science fiction. One of the most notable was Arthur C. Clarke. The show boasted as many guest stars as well. Famous actors such as Paul Newman, Boris Karloff, and Leslie Nielsen played in episodes. Some episodes were from classic novels like Frankenstein. The series did live. The series did a live-action version of the classic in which Lon Chaney played the monster. That episode became notorious among fans because Chaney was was intoxicated while he performed the role of Frankenstein's monster. While the show was in while the show was on the air, Chaney made mistakes performing his part. At one point, he was supposed to be smashing a chair on the ground, but picked it up and placed it back down instead. Tales of Tomorrow was a, it was the first sci-fi anthology series on TV. The show's target audience was, was adults, and the producers worked a sense of mystery along with fast-paced stories. The series opened with a person wearing a velvet glove walking toward an electrical switch and the unseen individual closes the circuit. The viewer sees electricity moving between two poles. The series also used eerie organ music to create a mood in each episode. 
it was the same kind you heard in the radio dramas of the 30s and 40s. I watched a few episodes of the series, and the storytelling is excellent. I think the stories would, would hold up today by today's standards as well. They may have, they have to be touched up a bit for a contemporary audience, but its core are great stories. Recently, I watched an episode called The Search for the Flying Saucer, in which, in which, in this story, a reporter travels to Mexico in regards to reports of UFOs. He gets a room in a hotel and goes about questioning the locals about any sightings. However, no one will cooperate with him and his investigation goes nowhere. He does get a tip from the hotel clerk that he has seen spaceships inside caves. The clerk takes him takes him there, but the reporter finds no evidence of UFOs. The, the clerk claims that he was telling the truth and anyone who had who has come before him has died mysteriously. So the reporter gets reassigned to another case and promptly leaves town. It's in this, then the secret it gets revealed about the aliens and the flying saucers. You can find this episode on YouTube and many others as well. I will include the very episode I just talked about in my vocal media page. Another episode that is very different from the norm is The Lost Planet. That story is worth checking out due to its offbeat nature. Hello, Ever German here. I wanted to take a few moments to talk to you about Anchor FM. I am a first time podcaster and needed resources to get started. I found this through Anchor FM. Anchor provides a platform to use and will distribute your podcast for free. Not only will it appear on Anchor, but also other pl- on other platforms as well, such as Spotify, Apple, Podcasts, and many others. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is to download the Anchor app to your computer, smartphone, or tablet. Then get started creating your podcast on, An- on Anchor. You can record your podcast right from your computer or smartphone using the app. No other equipment is required. Just use what you already have. Also, you have creator tools that will allow you to edit, add music, and effects for your podcast, all for free. One of the best things about Anchor, aside from being free, is you can make money from podcasting on Anchor with no minimum listenership at all. Everything you need happens right here in one place at anchorf.fm. So go to, go ahead and download the free Anchor app or go to anchorf him and get started. The series Science Fiction Theater was produced by Ivan Torres and Maurice Zidi. The drama was an anthology series syndicated from 1955 to 1957. The series was shot on motion picture film and not broadcasted live like other shows of the period. The first season was the first season used color photography for its episodes, and the second two, season two was in black and white due to budget reasons. The series dealt with stories that were rooted in science fact as well as science fiction. The show's opening sequences had a camera focus on lab instruments and panned toward the host. The host was Truman Bradley, a character actor. He introduces the story, and he introduces the story. There were 78 episodes made, each was 30 minutes long. Bradley would would be in a laboratory during the opening sequence, demonstrating an experiment illustrating the plot of the story. He would outline certain proven or speculated principles of science incorporated into the episode. The The series would use any appeals of science for its plots, everything from space travel, human endurance, and communications. Some ep- episodes dealt with contact with aliens or had an emphasis on the paranormal. Once the story was concluded, Bradley would appear again for an epilogue. He stated that the episode was a work of fiction, but asked if he or she believed it. I've enjoyed watching the series 
since I discovered it on YouTube a few years ago. I seem to remember a reference from it from the sci-fi movie Back to the Future when McFly's father said he wanted to watch an episode of it rather than go out with his future go out with his future mom. I love the fact that the series was mostly factual science and technology that made each story very believable. It did give me the impression it was the forerunner to the techno thriller of today. I watched one episode of the series on YouTube a few years ago and it always stood out to be very, very realistic. I think, I even think it was one of the best of the series, season one, episode two, Matters of the Heart. In this story, a foreign dignitary is shot and wounded by an assassin. He gets treated at the hospital after being shot. However, he is in critical condition due to, due to a gunshot wound to the heart. The surgeon says he has only a few hours to live because of the way the bullet is lodged in his heart. He states that the only person who could operate on the patient is halfway around the, the globe. There's no way to reach him in time, so the doctors try to contact him by television signals bounced off the moon. At that time, there were no satellites in orbit, and it would not be until it'll be two years before Sputnik. The U.S. Army had conducted experiments using radar to send radio signals to the moon and bouncing them off the surface to receive a response. The experiments were known as Project Diana, which was concluded during, conducted during January of 1946 in New Jersey. Therefore, it proved the feasibility of future satellite communications and for space travel as well. Fortunately, the doctors were able to save the patient. The, the utilization of the TV signals reflected off the moon's surface enabled the doctors to consult with the specialist who was aboard the cruise ship in the Pacific Ocean. Without this type of link, the patient could have, couldn't have lived. It took an enormous amount of power to transmit the signal. It caused the city to experience a blackout. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my podcast on these two 50 sci-fi shows. I will talk about other 50 science fiction TV shows in a future podcast. If you like this podcast, please feel free to promote and send some feedback to me. You can follow me on Twitter at EdwardGerman3. That's at capital E W A R D capital G G R G E R M A N with a letter number I mean the number three make comments on the podcast page at wherever you get the get your podcast also be sure to check out my vocal media page for the written transcript podcast player pictures and video thanks for listening I hope you get another I hope to get another episode recorded soon